All right, you guys already know how important data is. And it's kind of crazy that it's all pretty much free online if you know how to access it. For this reason, web scraping might be my favorite part of all of programming, just because of how many different things you can do with it. You're essentially sending out a robot to extract data from anywhere on the internet that you can then use in your own apps. If this sounds powerful, it is. And the craziest part is how easy it is to do with JavaScript. My first idea was to build a whole app around web scraping, uh, maybe like a long tutorial, but I thought I would just show you the essentials of web scraping with JavaScript and a library called Puppeteer, and then you guys can go and do whatever you want with it. Okay, first things first, let's decide what we actually want to scrape. I think we can build a lot of cool apps by scraping Amazon. So let's just jump over to Amazon. One of the books I like, Black Swan. And I think it would be useful if we scraped the image URL, the title, and the price. Now, the nice thing about scraping is since the server can run it, you can run this as many times as you want. Uh, you can run it every 10 minutes and update some kind of a database where uh, ultimately you would probably save your data. But for our purposes, we're just going to scrape and then throw things away um, after proving we can do it. So I have an empty directory ready to go. Uh, nothing in there, as you can see. And we are going to need Node and NPM installed uh, for doing this. So the first thing I'm going to do is NPM init Y, which will create an empty package JSON. Next, I'll NPM install our one library that we need, Puppeteer. Puppeteer is a headless browser. So it's essentially the same as a browser you would use. Uh, in this case, it's Chrome. We can control it entirely with code, doing things like clicking, moving around, saving data, and even taking screenshots. So this is really, really powerful stuff, uh, especially considering that you can run it pretty often as long as you don't get blocked by the site you're visiting. Last step, I'm going to create a file called scrapers.js. And then I'm just going to open that file here. Uh, first thing I'll do is import the library puppeteer like this. Uh, I'm going to want to create an async function called scrape product that takes a URL as an argument. The async function gives us the capability to use the await keyword, which is going to be used a lot because we have to wait for different things to finish before moving on. I'll give you an example. To start up our browser, we're going to await uh, Puppeteer to launch a browser. And then after that, we're going to do the same with a page. Await browser new page. So this is going to give us a blank page. And then we'll want to go to our URL. Uh, I'm going to copy the URL over from Amazon from our navigation bar. And then just paste that in our function call at the bottom of the file. Finally, we can't forget to add await here too. Now you might find this hard to believe, but to scrape pretty much anything on the page, we only need to run three commands. But before doing that, we have to jump back over to the page we want to scrape. Now we find the element we want to scrape and we right click it. In this drop down menu, we go to inspect, which will show us the item in context in the page HTML. Uh, so we'll see it's the image is highlighted here. And then we're going to right click again, go to copy and click copy XPath. Okay, so we have the XPath copied. We're jumping back over and we're going to do a const bracket el equals page dot dollar sign x parentheses string paste. Okay, so walking through this, page is our open page. Dot x is a puppeteer selector, which allows us to select an item on the page by XPath. XPath is just a way to navigate the page and it's kind of like jQuery or the native JavaScript libraries, but it's just in a syntax that works very well with web scrapers and it's usually prefixed with one or two slashes. So in this case, and we have to put a wait here too, we are selecting the item we inspected by XPath and that's returning an array. Now what this is doing over here is we're pulling out the first item of the array or the zero index into a variable called EL. And this is called destructuring. So we're pulling the first item into EL. Presumably there's no second item, but um, it does return an array. So we have to extract that first item. We have the element. So the next thing we have to do is pull the source attribute out of that element. 
and we'll do that with the get property method and we want to take out src and again we need a wait there is one more step uh, because this is not a string so we have to pull out the string with source json value then we can console log that source text to see if it worked and finally i need one more await up here uh, essentially everything is prefixed with wait. Next, I'm just going to run node scrapers JS to actually run our file and our function call, and we'll see if that works. And that's great. So that's our image URL and, uh, it's not closing, but that's only because we need to add a browser dot close to the end. And then we're all good from here on. It's all downhill. So we just have to copy all of this, uh, change a couple variables. So we'll change EL to EL2. Um, make a few changes down here, but, uh, uh, I'll show you that now. Let's say we want to select this title doing the same thing, selecting inspect, right click inspect. And this will take us to an HTML element. Uh, and sure enough, the text is right there. And then we're going to copy XPath. Now back over in the code, I'm pasting the XPath in just like before. Uh, this is not an image tag. So instead of source, we're going to be want, we're going to want to get out the text and then we will do raw text here and then also change this to text. And then instead of property text, we need property text content. Okay. And then let's just log out that raw text as well and see if that works. Perfect. We have our title. We have our image URL. Finally, we need that price. I'm going to copy this, make it EL three. We're going to replace this with our price, right click inspect and right click, copy, copy XPath and paste. Now we just have to change these variables. Let's do text two, text two, and let's call this actually price and let's call this title and let's do uh, image URL. Okay. And there we go, guys. So you can do this for any page. You can scrape any items. Just follow this technique. If you're having problems, uh, I will say this. So sometimes you copy the XPath and it actually doesn't work for whatever reason. Here's a quick fix for that. When you go copy, copy, you just copy full XPath. And most of the time that will resolve your problem if you're picking up the wrong element with your XPath. So that is one way you can debug. Um, anyway, guys, I hope this was helpful. I tried to keep it short. And uh, I hope you can go try this out because web scraping is really powerful uh, and you can get creative with it.